Seamless Tuesdays Live, brought to you by LGB Marine, the marine construction and services specialists. Battlers, we are back for another edition of the Smash Hit Show Team List Tuesday, a show dedicated to break down and review the upcoming Round 2 clash against the Cowboys at Queensland Countryback Stadium. We have an absolute monster show in store for you tonight as we take a look at our key matchup, our ever-popular Lock It In segment, and as always, we'll be taking a look at our pathways and their upcoming clashes also. Uh, we know you've been itching, absolutely itching to have your burning questions answered as you look to our genius and have absolute wisdom bestowed upon you tonight. So kick back, battlers, get comfy as we take a look at the Tom Jenkins and outs of round two for the Knights. Let's go. Welcome to the Knighted Podcast with your hosts, Lincoln Ison. Sean Lazenby and Matt Storky Stork. Boys, 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 how are we doing on the round two Tuesday afternoon? Uh, st- st- oh, Sean, jeez, I'm getting tongue tied with you, boys. <laughs> Sean, I'm going to get that out. Yes. Sean, how, how are you doing, mate? Good, mate. Refreshed. Moved on from round one. We've moved on from week one. Week two has officially started. We can move on with our lives and move forward collectively. How did you think our performance was in round one? Do you think uh, do you think we were as rusty as the Knights, or do you think we just came out? We just come out firing, boys. I Jeff. think we're absolute dog shit. Really? No. Nah, a few, pa- a few oh, passes. Oh. Few passes hit the decks. A few missed tackles. <laughs> well, yeah. A few um, few sets again. Set restarts. Mm. Um, no, I think we're doing all right. Well, that's good. Uh, yeah. Stalky, brother. How are you doing, pal? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. I guess what you're saying there, I guess it's not up to us to decide, I guess. So I guess the battles mm. can answer that one for us. But um, yeah, mate, I'm good. It's always a weird one on the Tuesday show where um, we talk about what we've been up to because we literally only got asked the same question like two days ago. So <laughs> haven't really been up to too much since then. But um, no, nah, looking forward to this week's of footy. Moving on. Moving on, boys. Moving on. Bigger and brighter things, yeah. eh? But I'll tell you what, boys. First things first. The NFL free agency window open oh, yeah. today. Mm-hmm. So um, obviously three, the, uh, the big news came out and our three teams are involved. I was a very happy man. Sean was a very happy man. I was so happy. Yeah. Link, not so much. And ironically, for the same reason that Sean was happy. <laughs> so um, I'm happy we finally at the Atlanta Falcons have now a new franchise quarterback, which we've been missing since the Matt Ryan days. So I'm looking very optimistic next season. I'm waiting for the season to start already. So yeah, good news. Well, see, NFL for me is you very much um, gravitate towards one player. You find one player and he's your absolute favorite. Um, and Lincoln's absolute favorite for the New York Giants has just signed with my Philadelphia Eagles. So Put it, put it this way, Battlers. It'd be like if Kalen Ponga had signed with the fucking Roosters. Yes. That's, that's kind of the vibe, okay? It's just put yourself in my shoes. Um, and do you know the the issue? It's 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 a double edged sword. NFL jerseys. <laughs> I actually own a couple of pretty rare, hard to get hold of Giants jerseys with fucking Saquon Barkley on it. So I can't even look at them. I've thrown them in the back of the cupboard in absolute disgust. Um, I felt it made. It feels like a loved one's died. He is dead to me. He's absolutely. It feels like you know you know when Star Wars is that scene. With Anakin's just lying in the pit of lava with Obi Wan, he's like, "You were the chosen one. You know, you're, you're, you know, you were you were brought here to defeat evil, not join it." But anyways, yeah, um, but what a strange one. Sean and I are partying this morning, and um, Link's like sitting in the corner quietly sobbing. So, but mm, we got yeah. through it. 
yeah, sort of a kick in the dick, especially when it's a divisional rival too. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to dwell too much on that one, boys. So we're not here to talk about the NFL. But, well, actually, I digress a little bit, actually. Do you boys actually think the NRL need to adopt, adopt a free agency window? It is bloody exciting. It is. Like yeah. you, you look at today, we woke up to just a bombardment of news. There was articles everywhere. This guy's going here. This guy's going there. Literally first day of free agency and – it's it's bananas and it just pulls you back in, doesn't it? Like we've been out since the Super Bowl. You know, you're you're yeah, kind of been it, out of the NFL mode. You get this the, today, and I've yeah. been since I got my ears. I've been on a high all day. It's bloody amazing. And it's not this. It's not like the NRL where, say Lincoln Lincoln's uh, Barkley, for example. Like say the Giants aren't able to halfway through last season start negotiating with him to renew his contract. They have to start at the trade window with teams wanting to sign him. So it's someone looking for a re-signing and a signing coming in at the same time and you're just looking at both offers going, which is better? Yeah. It, it's got its pros and cons, obviously. Like, for example, a massive pro would be the Dominic Young situation mm. where we, we knew the beginning of last season that we were going to lose Dominic Young, whereas... In this situation, you go throughout the whole season and not a word said until the, that trade window it's, opens. It's such a distraction. Like, if there is, yeah. I can see why the RLPA push against it because they're saying, well, they want time for players to move families, all this sort of stuff. But it, yeah, it, I, I, it doesn't sit well with me. Like, I'll use Jerome Luai for an example. Like, okay, he's the big news. He's, you know, let, let's be honest, he was like the big. He made all the headlines with signing with the West Tigers and that. But then he's got to play. It's sort of put on the back burner because you're like, okay, now he's going to go play another season with the Panthers. It's not like, oh, wow, he's playing. He signed with the Tigers. Yeah. Look out round one, Jerome Luai is coming to the Tigers. It's, yeah. it's you know. Puts it's a sour taste. I'm not even a Penrith nor a Tigers fan, obviously, but it's still like, even myself, it just puts like a little bit of a sour taste after the news is released because you're like, oh, sweet. Okay, this is awesome. You know, I'm not. Like I said, a fan of either of those teams, but it's going to be interesting as a rugby league fan to see him go there, see how he performs and how the team performs. But even for like people like us, you got to go, oh, okay, we've got to wait a whole other year before we see that. So you can only imagine what the fans of those teams feel like. And like, so. imagine if he got injured, you know, it just seems like I imagine like the Americans would be like, what are you doing? Like, why do you like, let's be honest, he'd be the <laughs> West Tigers, probably the highest paid player in their history. And they're like, what, you're going to let this fucking guy go play? 26, 27, 28 weeks of football. What if he gets mm. injured? You know, you've invested all this money and you're like, yeah, it makes sense. Like you're investing that money into him, yet you're praying to God nothing bad happens to him between now and then. It's yeah. I'm sure I'm yeah. sure in the future we'll get to the point. It looks like it's inevitable. Like the NFL seemed like at 10 years or so in front of us that the NRL kind of looked to adopt certain things from him. Um don't get me started on the trade, the trade windows and all that. that even a, a uh, trade window, the draft, such a spectacle. Eh? Just keeps yeah. well, mate, rugby Vegas, league going. Since Vegas, I've never heard the NFL mentioned by NRL or NRL shows any more than I ever have during you know that Vegas period. Like mm. on all the shows, everyone was mentioning the NFL. So they definitely, mate, it's one of the biggest leagues in the whole in the world, and it's you know the game is kind of similar to ours. So yeah, no doubt. It just, and it keeps it. it in the news cycle. Like okay, now we've got the free agency window. What's the next thing on the horizon, boys? The draft. Draft. Yeah, the draft yeah. is coming Very up, exciting, and then the exactly. season. So you've always got these big spectacles. It's not just mm. the playing season. There's there's everything that comes with it. The building a team, which is really exciting. But anyways, yeah. maybe maybe in I don't know, Valandis Valandis might usher in this much sooner rather than later, but. Look, boys, we're not here to talk about the NFL all night. We're here to talk about our round two clash against the North Queensland Cowboys. 5.30 p.m. Queensland Country Bank Stadium this Saturday, the 16th of March. We will be heading up to take on the top of the table, boys. The Cowboys are currently sitting at first with plus 25 uh, with a 1-0 and record this year. Really can't go off that too much, but uh, Knights currently at 14th, carrying in at minus 16. Um, and what's this last five? What was that? The oh, last those are the games? last five games. Obviously, we've oh, only okay. played one. Oh, okay. Um, now looking ahead, uh, the Cowboys 
scoring seven tries last week, running 242 metres. Uh, oh, sorry, with 240. God, I hope they ran more than 242 metres. Uh, with 242 runs, making 2,074 metres, 681 post-contact. The Knights only managing two tries, 184 runs with 1,625, only 519 post-contact. Uh, the Cowboys with seven line breaks. The Knights, four uh, 25 tackle breaks. With the Knights actually making more, 27. If there's one thing we seem to be good at, boys, and we've brought mm. over from last year, it's still we can break tackles, which is which yeah. is a positive. Uh, the Cowboys managing 10 offloads to the Knights, seven. Uh both teams, sorry, the Cowboys with 311, with the Knights making 399 tackles, 20 missed tackles for the Cowboys, 23 for the Knights, uh, and the Cowboys only making eight errors to the diabolical 15 errors made last week by the Knights. Um, yeah, so uh, Sean, I believe you've got you've got a fair bit you get to get off your chest, pal. Mate, I do. I'm a scat man. Thought I'd bring my my stats back and um, stats are back. Bringing stats back, baby. I've I've been really worried about doing these stats because it's not pretty. I'm I'm just going to throw it out there that it's not pretty. I want you to strap yourselves in. Take a deep breath, Battlers. Yeah, go Hold on gra- tight. Go and Hold grab a whiskey, a scotch, something strong fireball whatever you want to drink go and get something strong she's not good um let's start with the not so bad shall we notice i didn't say good let's start with the not so bad knights and cowboys have played 44 times both have won 22 each 50 percent. not bad the knights average 3.5 tries a game at queensland country bank stadium and 3.2 tries a game in townsville talking about you know the, the old stadium. Um, the Knights have scored 72 points in four games, played against the Cowboys at Country Bank Stadium, averaging only 18 points a game. Do you boys think 18 points a game is enough to beat the Cowboys at home? Oh, this current te- Cowboys team? I'm this gonna current say no. Cowboys. Well, I'm yeah, going to say, say no. no. That's going to have to be a no on that one. Sorry, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's not a good record at Queensland Country Bank Stadium, Townsville, or Queensland in general. Now, the Cowboys joined the competition in 1995. Newcastle would not win in Townsville until round 16, 2000. Wow. 2000 was the first time we got a win in Townsville. The Knights' last win in Townsville was back in round two. So this is round two also, so it could be a coincidence there. Round two of the 2015 season where we won 16 points to 14. Newcastle have played the Cowboys four times at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. Do you want to know how many times we've won? Of the four times? Of the four times. If you take a stab. I don't like, I don't like, our, chan- I don't like our chances at all, to be honest. No, I'm Zero gonna, percent. I'm, I'm going to say yeah, a duck egg, okay. yeah. We, yeah. We have not beat them at the new stadium in Townsville. Record in Townsville overall, altogether, is not much better. The Knights have played in Townsville 24 times, only winning seven of those 24 games. Shit. For a winning percentage of 29.1. Gets worse. Oh. Knights record in Queensland against Queensland teams. We've played 67 games, only winning 18 what? For a winning percentage of 26.9. Read that out again. Against Queensland sides in Queensland. So your Crushers, your Broncos, your Titans, your Cowboys. 67 Eagles. games. Yep. We've only won 18. Wow. That's really bad, but it's kind of believable, though. The Queensland teams always seem to be our bogey sides. Titans, yeah, Cowboys, we're not Broncos. good north of the border, 26.9%. No. And for some reason, this one hits the hardest. This one hits the hardest. I've left the last one to hit the hardest. Since our last premiership back in 2001, we have beaten the Cowboys in Townsville only five times. Holy dooly. Five from 19. Since so what's 2001. 22 years ago. Is that right? 23 years. Five yeah. times. Wow. Yeah. We do not play well in Queensland or Townsville. 
it'll be interesting to see what the Cowboys' overall win percentage is at home. Because have a look at it. Think about this. Like climate wise, mm. do you think the Cowboys would be the mm. hardest place to play? This time, so especially hot, this time of year, bro. So muggy. It's it's like no other climate, like any mm. any stadium, any area, any team has. So, yeah. Man. Yeah, you, can, you can imagine like the, like the poor old Raiders or someone or like <laughs> that going up there. It'd be such a big yeah. swing. But yeah, especially this time of year and wow, fuck. I didn't think it was what, that what, bad. What do you think it is? Apart from take climate out of the situation, what do you think it is? Do you th- um, is it two pla- – or we, we would go to Sydney. I suppose we would probably catch the bus to Sydney and then one flight rather than two flights from Newcastle. So – I don't know. What do you? I would say we'd get up there a few days before we'd play. It wouldn't be like a get up there the day before and do a captain's run and then play the following day. Well, you'd what, imagine. What you'd imagine over bad, that. But think about like we we've got to travel further. Like correct me if I'm wrong. But you know, over in New Zealand, like I'd be interested to see our record over in New Zealand. So that's obviously a long distance to travel as well. So, but I think it's a mixture mm. of yeah, the traveling and just the climate up there. It's just. What else is it? There's so many different teams to blame it on a certain team for and so many like years it's happened that it has to be down to either the elements or something like that. So But even even the Gold Coast, for example, like you just you go over this invisible barrier into Queensland and we don't win. I yeah, don't know what it yeah. is. Wow, hmm. that's um geez, that makes that, that bloody Broncos loss at Suncorp sting even more. Last year? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The Cowboys man. have had a decent side, but I remember they sucked there for a while. I remember the Cowboys were absolutely terrible. I don't know, that was like mm. late 90s or something. They were terrible, but they've had a decent side for a while now, on and off. So mm. unlike the Titans, when you go up there and you kind of, you know, more times than not, you kind of expect to beat the Titans and they just beat us up there as well. Well, that's so about that. They've made, they made three grand finals since we made our last one in 2001, like winning, winning one of them, losing two of them. 2005, 17, and 15. So, yeah, they've been, yeah. you know, they've been at the, the right end of the, the ladder, you'd think, yeah. most years. So, wow. Carly, yeah. um, Carly the um, one of the battlers, Carly Fitzpatrick here, said we have to get Ponga to pawn his Queensland jersey. So maybe he can wear that under his Knights jersey or something. Maybe that's yeah. the secret to unlocking it. Throw his training singlet on or something underneath it. Yeah, yeah man, that is, that is bad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for that, Sean. That was if, awesome. if, if no everyone, if, no everyone is, if, if everyone has turned off <laughs> their, the podcast or just absolutely <laughs> shut up shop and the viewership has just plummeted, we know why. Yeah, everyone, yeah. Everyone's yeah. grabbed the grass. You know, no, not forward. my bad. Not my bad. It's not my fault that we we win, what, 29.1% of the time in Townsville and 26.9% of the time in Queensland. That's not my fault. No. Mm. No, but... um, like well, yeah, you know, so more. Records are meant to be broken. Well, that's... <laughs> the only way is up, Battlers. The only way is up from this show. Exactly. We, yep. we, only just way went, is up. we just hit rock bottom, so it's all up from this point. All right. We can guarantee you that. So yeah. um, well, why don't we move right along to the team list, boys? Um what everyone's clutching their bits to to dive into. Uh our opposition, the Cowboys. Let's start with them. In the back line, we have Scotty Drinkwater, Kyle Felt. Valentine Holmes, Zach Labor, Murray Torlungi, Tom Deaton, and Chad Townsend with the Knights, Kalen Ponga, Tom Jenkins coming away, coming in for the injured Anari Tuwala, Dane Gagai, Bradman Best, Greg Marzu, Tyson Gamble. Tyson Gamble hangs onto that spot. I think there was a lot of opinions floating around, so I'm sure we're going to get more on the halves battle later on. And Jackson Hastings runs out with the uh, keeping that halfback jersey. Moving right along to the forward pack, we have Jordan McLean, Reese Robson, the New South Wales representative, Jason Tolmalolo, Helam Lukey, Jeremiah Nanai, and Ruben Cotter captaining the Cowboys with the Knights, Jacob Saifidi, Phoenix Crossland, Leo Thompson, Tyson Brazell, Kai Pierce, Paul coming in for the injured uh, Dylan Lucas, who picked up a head knock last week. Uh, he will now make his uh, NRL debut starting, I guess you would call it, not from the bench. He's starting debut. Yeah. Um, and Adam Elliott uh, in the lock position. Moving right along to the interchange bench, we have Jake Glanville, uh, Granville, Glanville, Jake Granville, 
Griffin Mean, Sam McIntyre, and Kuli Kefu Finufuiaki. I got it out. I've been practicing that all day. Uh, rounding out the <laughs> interchange bench with Tom Chester, Thomas McKayley, Sammy Velomai, Jack Kowalski, and Jake Clifford. Old Jakey Clifford rounding out the extended bench for the Cowboys. Uh, the Knights, Jack Cogger keeps that 14 jersey. Comment away whether you agree or disagree with that one. Uh, Daniel Saifidi, Jack Hetherington, and the Jedi Knight Cartwright will make his NRL debut from the bench. Uh, not his NRL debut, his Knights debut, I should say, from the bench uh, in Jersey 17 with the extended bench being Brody Jones, Will Price, Matt Croker, Fletcher Sharp, and Thomas Kant. Um, boys, let's get let's get the obvious one over and done with. Uh, Anari Tawala finds himself injured. Uh, we haven't really been given too much. I think the initial reports were looking at one, one, one to three weeks, something like that. So, yeah. Tom Jenkins. Now, um, there was reports like he came off at about the 60th minute mark in the New South Wales Cup, uh, talking to one of the the journalists at uh, the Newcastle Herald. Said it wasn't anything too serious. So he's been named. So there's really nothing. That they that they believe is any too concerning with that. So looks like he is going to be making his mark. Um, from what you saw from Tom Jenkins, are you surprised? Because I think you sort of had a bit I, of Fletcher Sharp as a bit of a smoke. I was I was surprised, but obviously he's your obvious choice because he's an out and out winger. Yeah. Um, did he so play in the, tri- in the trials? In the trials, though, trials did he play he's in, no, he's mainly in the centres in the that's trials. A, that's yeah. what I was a bit confused with. Um, and concerned about because I wanted to see him on the wing in the trials, but we didn't really get to see it. Mm. Um, but, yeah, one of the things I've kind of got my fingers crossed for is the fact that Fletcher Sharp has been named on the extended bench, mm. and I feel like you're not going to name Fletcher Sharp unless there's a possibility that he's a late smoky as a potential to come in onto that wing spot. Yeah, unless um, there is a bit of an injury, Cloud. Still might be injured, yeah. Because yeah. I think he's – I wasn't surprised he was named. Like, apart aside from the injury, if he's fully fit, I think it's just – he's just the next man up. I think that's just the way it is. That's yeah. why they signed him. Um, But, yeah, this is his opportunity, though. Like, Tuala's, you know, out of the picture for a couple of weeks. This is his opportunity. He hasn't really, to be honest, he hasn't really impressed in the trials. Um, you said he, well, he got injured in um, last week's New South Wales Cup game, so he didn't really impress big there. But if he has a couple of really big games and really impresses, grabs it by the gonads and goes for it, mate, he can make that his spot because Twala's got it, but it's not like a given that it's Twala's position. So mm. I think we all assumed, you know, rightly or wrongly, that Jenkins was going to come up and possibly be the starter. And then when Twala was named, I think there was a lot of people that, you know, may have been surprised. So if the kid mm. comes out and kills it, you know, it could be his business moving forward. So it's in his hands, really. Yeah, exactly. And that's how he's got to play it. He's got to play it as if exactly what you were just saying. This is my <laughs> going to get all 50 cent, but this is my, you know, he, this is his one shot. Um, that's Eminem, isn't it? Yeah, that's Eminem. Oh, yeah. Who did I say? 50 cent. <laughs> Yeah. On his, I was like, on his is, there a fa- <laughs> is there a famous uh, 50 cent quote I don't know about? That's Eminem. That's the no, um, In the club, um, what happened in the toilet cubicle? That could be his next next hit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. No, sorry. I was, think- was thinking Eminem. Um, yeah, this is, his, this is his shot. He's he's really got to take it because what's Jenkins got to do to really keep this spot? Because Tuala's, what, he averages somewhere around about 150 meters a game when he does play um and what he was our, our leading try scorer was it 2020 he was our leading try scorer it was a while ago it was a while ago yeah, yeah. um so it, it's not like he just has to have a couple of average games in the positions he's that he yeah. still has to have a good game if he yeah, performs he... well under those high balls, because like I said last week against the Raiders, I'm getting a little concerned that a lot of teams are seeing that as kind of the blueprint, putting, you know, high balls to our edges, you know. So I'm gathering this is probably going to happen again this week. So, um, so if he, you know, defuses a few of them, he's good in defense, and maybe he puts over, you know, right place at the right time, puts over the ball over the line a few times. He does that consistently in mm. the games coming up. It's going to be hard to deny him, really. Yeah. Uh, well, he's going to have his work cut out for him because – Boy, oh boy, they um, like the, the Cowboys are one of those teams. They they, the Cowboys of twenty twenty three was like our twenty twenty two. They were just diabolical, man. They were like probably the most disappointing team. I think so many people either 
if not top four, certainly top eight team, crashed out. I think what they finished eleventh or something like that. Did so, they start really badly? Did they start really badly then? Then go I, better I, towards the end, but it was too late, or was it the other way around? I've they, got a funny feeling that it might have been the case. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, boy, like they um they look again again yeah, the opposition mightn't have been great in the Dolphins, but boy, oh boy, racking up what forty three points. Um, and they they got a there's a try that they should have been given. They, they finished close to fifty points, really. Um, but yeah, a, like absolutely elite back lot. Like across the park, they're pretty good. But you said Tom Jenkins, man, what, what's he? He's going to be on the same. He will be on the same edge as um, uh, Murray Tuolungi, won't he? Yeah, yeah. So again, um, Queensland represent. I'm pretty sure he's played for Australia too. So no slouch uh, going <laughs> against Tuolungi. Um, but Jenkins, what do he say? He's he played six games for the Panthers with six tries. I think it was um, five for five. Five for five, was it? Yeah. Um, and you know, look, he's coming into still a very good back line. Like you could do a lot worse than have Dan Gagai. Dan Gagai, we all agreed, was our best player last week. And he seems yeah. to be playing some really good form, whether that's him trying to win another contract extension or not. But um, I'm sure Gags would be yeah, looking exactly. to, 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 be, to have a yeah, someone that's, on his outside yeah. of it's to got be, like not look after you type of mentality. Yeah, it's mm. got to fill you with confidence that you've got a player like yeah. Gags playing inside you. Mm. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kai Pierce Paul starting. I uh, uh, I thought of something today that we didn't get to see in round one, obviously with the injuries that happened last week. But what do you think the game plan would have been for Kai Pierce Paul on the bench last week with two 80-minute second rowers? Where do you think he would have come into mm. the game? had there not been an injury last week? Do you think he would have been in like a lock rotation or where do you think we would have seen Kai Pierce paul last week? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Eh? Do you think maybe we wouldn't have seen him at all? He would have just sat on the bench and not been utilised? It would have been yeah. like a late in the game type of thing, depending on what the score is. Maybe bring him in, give him a bit of a run, a bit of a test. Well, you remember um, uh, Lockie Miller was a bit like that. Remember there was a there was a game or two, he was named at 14. Yeah. And he didn't see any game time. Yeah, there was one. Yeah. And we he, were, and, everyone was screaming for him to have a go at 14 and he gets put at 14 and played nothing. Yeah. Didn't play one. one Maybe it would have been one game. of those games. If the game is well and truly in control, doesn't yeah. need to play. Okay. Well, you know, he's, he's still getting up to speed with the NRL and whatnot. So don't throw him in quite yet, but he must be impressing guys. Like if he's again, only that Fiji hit out, comes out and plays a pretty good 40 minutes. We gave him a pretty good rap on the Sunday show. Yeah. He's getting awarded with the, the starting spot. Um, well, who else what, would you give it to if it wasn't if it wasn't KPP? Like, obviously, we know Lucas is out. Obviously, that's why he's in there. But if it wasn't him, who would be filling in with Lucas injured if it wasn't KPP? I would I would be thinking you'd shift Frizz over to that side and you'd shore up the right. I just think you'd keep your best players on the left. But I, I saw enough from KPP to think this guy's got enough second phase. Yeah, I think it's less um, moving around if you just move him in. Bit of ball playing, but yeah, mm. I would have thought that's maybe what you do. You just go. It's a it's a very dangerous left edge. Oh yeah, Kai Pierce, Paul, that offload, Kalen Ponga, um, Bradman, Best. That is that's a potentially very dangerous left left edge. Well, he's got to it's have the same Madden. thing for Kai Pierce, Paul as well. Like we were saying about Jenkins, it's his time to own it. Like as much as we're all big fans of Lucas, it's an unfortunate that he got injured, but. Like they said, there's a lot of competitions. Um, a lot of competition in the club at the moment for these positions, and yeah, that's one. It's another one that's going to be up for grabs. If he can cement this as his position, Lucas is, may not have a position to come back to. So, well, it yeah. sort of shows you how much confidence Adam O'Brien must have in Kai Piss Paul to put him. Let's be honest, in one of the best piece of real estates in the NRL, the Newcastle Knights' left edge, um, mm. to, to get a guy to plug him in there. So he must be impressing and training. The combinations must be clicking because that's going to be the big thing. You know. The, you don't want things to start breaking down because he's maybe a, a step or two behind the play or things like that. But it certainly didn't look like that. It certainly looked like, you know, uh, what do you, what do we say? You got three or four, five offloads off. So if we can see some of that stuff, man, boy, mm. boy, I'd love to see, um, I'd love to see some late footwork, get a ball out, a floating KP or Bradman bursting onto it, mate. Um, we're a team that's right. Well, that's pretty silly. Every team thrives, but we're, we'd really thrive when we can get that loose ball out. I know sometimes we force it, you know, which we did a few times last week. But yeah, that'd be absolutely magic to see some of those from Innings game. 
Well, yeah. moving moving in even closer to the centre of the field, boys, the forwards. I think the forwards, if, if we're any chance, absolutely any chance, um, look, the Raiders were a very good test, a very good forward pack, but boy, oh boy. Um, mm. Some of these names, yeah, Jordan McLean, Reese Robson, Jason Tomalolo, um, Ruben Cotter, mate, absolute handful of a forward pack. Um, yep. Yeah, we've got to get physical, and we've got to get physical early. Um, exactly. It, none exactly. of this late start, let him come out in the first 20 minutes, and then we're going, oh, shit, let's get our shit together. Um, this game, I think we'll know very quickly if we are any chance. If we have any chance, because they're going to be a team that 10, 15 minutes, yeah. mate, they'll, they'll put two or three tries on you by the looks of things from what we saw at Suncorp. I know it's early uh, days. I know it's one game, but you read out the stats. You know, the history isn't good. Historically, no. we are not a good traveling team up there, and we're walking right into, let's be honest, uh, an environment they're well and truly comfortable with. So mm. it's, I hope Adam O'Brien, I hope the game plan is just – Get the fun. I don't. I don't want anything flashy for the first twenty minutes. Just get to the end. A uh, Ricky Stewart. We need a Ricky. We need Ricky Stewart. Yeah. In, in the ears of the boys, we need to play Raiders style football for the first twenty minutes. We really need to do what the Raiders did to us. We need to do against the Cowboys. Exactly. That, I had that in in my notes. Was just keep it simple. We just need high completion football. Get to the end of our sets and put it deep in their half. We literally need to play the exact same yeah. game plan the Raiders did against us. Yeah, no disrespect to the Raiders, but if we give fifteen errors, what do we complete at? Sixty-eight uh, percent, and they complete yeah. at ninety. Boys, they're yeah, going to put Cowboys are better. Yeah, they're a better. They're going to put more than twenty. They'll, they'll put twenty-four points this is in one half. Yeah, yeah, and up um, there, like we were talking before as well, so even more pressure. It'll be an absolute exactly. bloodbath. So I'm, I, you know. I think we can all agree we're prob- we're not going to see a repeat of round one. I'm sure, I'm sure this week at training there's been a lot said about the discipline and um, adjusting the way we play the brand of football we're playing. Like really looking at the Raiders as a as the the clear example of what we really need to be doing for the first month or so of football before things start to gel and you can you can start to start to get a bit more loose and throw some passes in and around the place and, and get a bit loose and funky that way, but. Yeah, we just cannot afford. We Last can't week would afford have been embarrassing. Yeah. Last week would have been embarrassing for the boys as well. So that would have been drilled into them all week, and they're not going to want to feel that feeling again. So hopefully they come in a bit more fired up. But um, is there yeah. any bad blood, boys? With um, like Chad Townsend, he's um, you know, left Cronulla and he went up to North Queens. Kind of had like a new lease of life up there. But let's rewind a little bit. Um, go back to when we played Cronulla. Remember when um Chad Townsend come out of the line, played stopped. I can't remember exactly what oh, the details yeah. were. Was and a, he absolutely. It was a and he absolutely poleaxed Ponga when Ponga was not expecting it. Yeah. Is there any bad blood there still with Townsend? You reckon? I don't, think, so. I don't, I don't think there was. was a, I don't think there was ever any bad blood. I don't think Ponga is the type of person that would have bad blood with anyone. He probably doesn't remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would. I would well, blame I mean, if he didn't. More so, more so with us fans, like. Then, yeah, like you said, he probably doesn't remember much after that. That was a bloody big hit. That was a shocker, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah, it was like a shoulder. That was Did a dog. That was in? a yeah. dog shot. Yeah. Like, play had stopped. He wasn't even looking at him. That was, yeah, that was terrible. So we, we, we were winning that game, right? Was it just out of frustration? Had to have been. Had to have been one of those games where we were just pumping him or something and he's just taking yeah. it out and poor old KP. But was that yeah. not the one where, wasn't, wasn't that the round one game where Edric Lee got the interception and scored? Wasn't it that game? I thought it was later. Yeah, I thought season. it was a bit later as well, but maybe well, it must have been another season. Might have been twenty twenty, maybe. The year after. Maybe. Know. Maybe. But yeah. Adrian, yeah. are you in the comments? I just know. Someone yeah, someone will know. Hey, yeah. hey, as soon as I said that he's popped up twenty twenty. There we go. Mm. So. The Chad Townsend twenty twenty attempted murder on Kalen Ponga. So yeah. <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, I think that's uh, th- that's going to be the absolute key for it, and I'm sure the battlers agree is just whatever the Raiders did. I hope the boys really watched the get the, the tape that they watched was like, boys, look what the Raiders are. This is w- we got a talent, more talented roster. The, the other things will come. Just let's mm. just get that percentage up, the the, the possession um, percentage up. Fuck it, fifteen errors. My God, that has to stop. That is ridiculous. Yeah. So. Um, Boys, what was the what was the one thing that you remember hearing the most last year from the players? They used to, the, especially when we went on this ten run win. What everyone kept saying. 
a lot of a lot of players kept saying trust the process. Mm. Remember a lot of players saying that. Yeah, I'm finding it very very hard to trust this process of Cogger at 14. Yeah, I I don't know what we're going to see this weekend. I'm not sure um, if we got to see what the initial game plan was meant to be last weekend because we had those injuries. So I don't know, but I don't want to see more of what they gave us last week where we had four halves on the field at one stage. What 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 can you think of that they'd be doing with Cogger at 14? I, I'm, I really don't know, bro. Like... Because last week, what you had Anari go off. We talked. We talked about it in great length. Yeah, like, it was just you lose Anari on one edge. Dylan Lucas goes. It's just you got Adam Elliott playing on an edge, and you're pushing gags out, and it's just it's a you know it's it's all over the fucking place. So and this could be the last week to try it as well. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Braley due back possibly week three? So there's a yeah. chance that he mm. could be back next week. So Cogger may not even be in the side. So whatever they're going to do. They better bloody get it right this week or, yeah. Was, was Braley named in New South Wales Cup? I uh, haven't seen Cup, actually. I'd be interested to see because it, surely if he's healthy, he doesn't come straight back anyways, right? He wouldn't. Surely, surely not. Um, I so. Yeah, I, bro, I don't know. I really – whether whether it's um, the same thing again where it looked like you push Crossland in, 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 in the defending in the middle bit at lock and then – no, he's not playing. He's not playing. Yeah. No. So, yeah. yeah. I think speaking of bench spots, when's Croker due back? Like he's doing. Well, he's on extended seven. bench now. Oh, he's on extended bench now. So, okay, there you go. Yeah. So, I wonder if he's still like got something niggling, or whether, and that was you know he didn't make it into that side, or whether he's still got something niggling for the reason he's not in there. Who knows? Yeah, mm. yeah. I, it's, I genuinely don't know, man. I don't. Maybe just all clicks. Maybe maybe there's just something that happened in round one that had been working so well in training. I know training and playing is very different, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just if it just goes I, if it goes wrong against a team like this, it goes wrong very fucking fast. So yeah, mm. let's hope they have their weedies on Saturday yeah. morning. Yeah, weedies, wheat bigs, weedies. Uh, weedies. You know the American weedies. <laughs> Big cereal in America, and they uh, had all sports stars. Michael Jordan might like, used to advertise it for ages. Nah. Wheaties. I don't know if you remember Link. Someone remember I've, I've heard of Wheaties. Never eaten. Them yeah, either. I've never eaten them either. I don't even get them over here. But yeah, huge in America. Right. But yeah. um, the Jedi Knight Cartwright, mate, um, he's going to be making his uh, Knights debut from the bench. Look, he was one of those players that was didn't light the world on fire, but he was pretty solid. I thought in the trials. Yeah, I, th- I thought he was good in the trials. A yeah. toiler going to make a, a you know. Again, another player that's going to be dickless. He's just going to tackle for days and days. Um, is he going to look off of what KPP and Frizzell probably offer an attack? Probably not. He's just one of those guys that's going to be probably, uh, you would think, a really good sort of defensive back rower. Probably could push him in the middle in a pinch if you really needed to. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, this this team this week, do you think it's a stronger team than last week? With the admission of Anari Tuala and and uh, KPP making a start opposed to Lucas, not really. I think no? they're they're essentially like for like. Bit of a sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a good way it's, of it. A bit of a sideways. It's not forward. It's not really backwards. It's hard to say with Jenkins is only playing five NRL games. We haven't seen too much of him, and what we did see of him was at the best club in the competition. So. Mm. Um. Yeah, it's it's hard to say whether you know. I'm not going to sit here and say that based on those five games, he's an upgrade from Tuala because I think that that's a bit of a joke to to say that already. Um. So yeah, I think it's just a lateral. I think it's just sideways. Put it this way: If do you think? Okay, on that, do you think Anari Tuala could have done what? Tom Jenkins did for the Panthers. Put it that way. Yeah. Tom Jenkins obviously gets plugged into the Panthers, does a job. He filled in, what, five, what'd you say, five games. So clearly they've got all the confidence in the world he could do a job out there. You reckon Anari could have done the exact same thing? Yeah, 
Absolutely. A simple player, like from what we've seen. Yeah, it's too early to tell. We haven't seen much from Jenkins, but from what we have seen, they're very similar. What what did Tuala score in that year that he got, was our leading try scorer, wasn't it? Nine, was it 19 tries? Something like that. Something like that, 19 yeah. tries. Um, mate, you put someone who scores 19 tries in a 2019, was it? 2019, 2020? Something like that. Newcastle Nightside, you put them on a premiership winning... Um, back line like the Panthers, yeah, I think he, I, I think he would do really well. Mm. Um, yeah, to answer mm. that question, interesting, very interesting, plenty, plenty of, uh, plenty to look forward to. It, it, it is the exciting part of the start of the year when you start to see all these fresh faces. And mate, we could be sitting here on Sunday and just going, wow, Tom Jenkins, boys, mm. bargain by Total the year, contrast you know? to last Sunday. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like the Milky Bar yeah. kid has just lit the world on fire. But oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, and like I said, that whole vibe changes, you know, within the fan, you know, the fan base. If we come out and we have a good game and we dig in or, and we beat the um, Cowboys, then, yeah, everything kind of changes. I mean, everyone's back on the positive train again. So yeah. exactly. that happens. Exactly. Well, while we're on the uh, subject of wingers, guys, let's move right along to our key matchup this week. And that will be... The bulldozer himself, Greg Marzu, up against Kyle Felt, who was the leading try scorer for the uh, for the Cowboys last season. Uh, Kyle Felt, thirty two years of age, one hundred ninety one centimeters, one hundred three kegs, playing one hundred and ninety three games, scoring one hundred twenty nine tries against Greggy Marzu, uh, who was twenty six years of age, quite a bit shorter at one hundred seventy seven centimeters, but heavier, so mm. um, at one hundred four uh, with forty eight games 37 tries and i might add a uh a break dancing championship we will give that mark to greg marzo i don't think kyle felt has one of those so greggy marzo getting the edge on that one but yeah, yeah. doesn't In- mean int- robot from what i've heard there mm, interesting one here obviously both players are prolific try scorers um kyle felt almost scored in the the end of the game the other week which would have leveled him with Manny oh. bowen that's with 100. Wrong. Was it 190 tries? 100, that was, uh, how was that not a try? So it must be 130. 130 tries equaling Matty Bowen's club record. But yeah, I think it should have been a try. Oh, absolutely. Um, but anyway, if you break it down, like I like to break down things, um, if you go averages over those average games, Kyle Fell averages 0.66 tries a game. Greg Marzu averages 0.77 tries a game. So nice. Greggy Boy's got him on average. Nice. Yep. Thought I'd bring that up. Very good. I'd like to see the tackle-breaking one. I reckon he'd absolutely smoke him in the tackle-breaking department. Um, but there you go. Uh, round one statistics uh, for Kyle Felt. Bagged a try. Uh, got one line break. 205 metres, five tackles. None missed with Greggy Marzu. Unfortunately, not getting any tries with five tackle breaks, however, 209 metres, one tackle, zero missed. So um, going to be very interesting. I think, man, because, boy, we didn't really talk about it. Remember how close Greggy got to that try? The running joke was if we oh, had the yeah. same referee that refereed the bloody World Club Challenge, he probably yes, had a lot of bloody try. try. Yeah. I think he probably got closer than well, um, oh, of course yeah, he did. Of course mate, he did, yeah. the World Club Challenge. Yeah. Mm. So hopefully we get to see, um, yeah, the Br- Brady Best Mazu connection where he just pins the years back. I'm sure he's still stinging. I'm sure he's been copping shit all week at training with poor old Tommy Starling standing him up. So <laughs> yeah, that ain't gonna happen again. That ain't gonna happen again. He's got funny about those stats because like they weren't hugely different. Like obviously the line breaks were a little bit different. Um, felt got a try, but we were saying that Marju didn't have the best game. Felt a bit defeated last week, but you blokes were saying that um, felt had a good game. So. It's a little room for movement there, so it'll be interesting in going head to head this week. Definitely, I yeah. just I just think yeah. Felt had the opportunities where Marzu kind of didn't. He made the most of what he had. We said the same thing with Brady, mate. It was just very limited opportunities, and whenever we did get in a, in a, in an attacking space, it just an error or I don't know, it just imploded, or someone would just get tackled on fifth with it. So hopefully, all <laughs> hopefully all that rust is gone, boys. All, all that rust mm. is gone, and we're going to see plenty of highlights. Coming from uh, coming for this, but look, speaking of highlights, boys, uh, one thing that certainly wasn't a highlight last week, um, our tips. So let's move right along to the oh, punt. Lock it in. Well, 
Oh, lock it in. Sorry, what am I saying? Jesus yeah. Christ. The favourite segment. I've just completely skipped a segment. So I've Taking it away from everyone, you asshole. I got tackled on fifth, boys. I'm going to put my hand up. Sorry, boys. <laughs> the lock it in segment. The favorite, one of the favourite segments. The lock it in, boys. Let's move right along to that, shall we? All right, guys, your very favorite segment. So start firing them in, you lock it in. Um, unfortunately, good friend of the show, Eddie Maguire, couldn't make it again, so I'm going to have to take the reins once more. Um, I don't know. He's... Is he still on TV? Mate, he's everything. He he does everything, that bloke. Um, so he's still floating around? I'm, I think so, mate. It wasn't he? At one point, it looked like he was on every bloody TV show, that fella. He was sort of like our rock of TV. The guy doesn't mm. sleep between his TV stuff and Colin. He's like, yeah, yeah. Bloody, he mustn't sleep that way. Mm, must sleep. But, boys, who's first cab off the rank this week? I'll um, I'll go first this week. Kick it off, I'll, mate. What do you got? Go up. Look, I'm going Kai Pierce Paul anytime, anytime try scorer. I just feel like with his, his night's run on debut. I just feel like we're going to see a try from Kai Pierce, Paul. Uh, I'm going with Phoenix Crossland to get a try assist. So whether or not that's um, those little grubbers in goal, that he's, he, what, about four last year? I think yeah, about yeah. four try assists last year from a little grubber in goal. Uh, Kalen Ponga to have five tackle breaks. I just feel like, mate, he can he can break tackles, especially if he runs like he did, runs straight and surprises us like mm. he did last week. I'm going Kalen Ponga for five tackle breaks. And the Safidis combined to have over 200 metres. So whether that's 100 each or someone steps up a little more than the other, but I feel like the Safidis are going to combine for over 200 metres. We're going to need it, pal. We're going to need it. We're going to need it. Uh, Tyson Frizzell to tackle his dick off, 30-plus tackles and... Unfortunately, battlers, <sighs> our history up there in Townsville. I've I've got to go Cowboys one to twelve. It's very justifiable, mate. After those horrific statistics you just read out, so um, yeah, yeah hard okay. hard hard to push back, pal. Well, I'll go yeah. next because I'll try and we'll we'll go like ups and down. So I'll go next. Okay, so I've gone for Phoenix Crosland to kick a forty twenty. So I think um. That's definitely going to happen. Daniel Saifidi to be put on reports. That's a, one of those like out there ones that I like to throw in. No playing safe like last week. You know, the floaties have come off. You know, no um, gates up for me this week. So Saifidi to be put on report. Um, Greg Marju, yeah. first try scorer. And I've got one coming to me now, which probably isn't a good one. But I also think that Chad Townsend is going to get a 40-20. Not very often you put two 40-20s in one lock and in blokes, but I'm doing it today. Sound like one of those bloody infomercials, don't yeah, I? I was about to say, right, oh, you've, you've sold me. I'll take one, please. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> the Knights, 1 to 12. We're going to get it done up there against all odds, against all stats, against all that stuff. Well done, We're going to get it done 1 to 12. So, like George Michael said, you've got to have faith. So, I'm, I'm running with it. I'm running with it, brothers. Good on nice. you, mate. Good stuff, Storky. All right, let's do this. Kalen Ponga, 200 run meters. Look, he didn't play badly last week. Just. Shit didn't go right, so I'm expecting a big bounce back for Kalen Ponga against his old club. Brabham Best, three tries. Um, I just, I don't know. I've got a funny feeling this one's going to lean a little bit into my next lock it in with Kai Pierce Paul. I just think there's something brewing. I just think there's something brewing there. I think KPP being a little bit of an unknown commodity, not a lot of tape on the guy. Maybe he's going to be our greatest asset out there. So I know it's going to be tough, but Brady's, Brady's done it on the biggest stage in Origin. He can do it up in Townsville. So lock in Brady Best for three tries and Kai Pierce Paul for four offloads. Jack Cogger, two try assists. I think he's going to be playing nice and direct. He looked like he had all the time and space in the world. Massive fan of Jack Cogger. So I think he's going to um, have far more greater impact on this game than he had in round one. So um, which is just going to anger and create more problems for Adam O'Brien moving forward. Um, a Dane Gag guy forced error. Um, he's an angry man at the moment. He's on mm. a mission. He's getting older. When you get older, you get a bit more grumpier. You have a brain fade. He, he's got it in him every now and then, Dane Gag guy. So <laughs> I, I had to chuck, I just chuck one of those in there. Um, and unfortunately, look, I would I, I hate to do this, Battlers, but look, 
the Cowboys look – they look very good. They look very, very good. They look fit. They look fast. They look like they've got points for days. They are, they've got a very good roster. Um, and, yeah, I think if we can manage – if we can manage to keep the Cowboys from 1-12, to that's a little victory. That's a little victory. It's not the end of the world. I think you go up there and you can keep it tight. We can walk away with our heads held high. If we get blown off the park, that's a different story. But we can go go up to Tansville, and even if we don't get the two points, if we can duke it out with these guys in probably, as we spoke about, one of the harshest, toughest conditions up there in Tansville this this time of year, it's not too bad. Not too It'd bad. It's interesting so. to see um, what the actual temperature is because, like, obviously you wouldn't know, um, Link, but Sean, down here, how dry has it been lately? I was literally yeah. mowing the lawn this afternoon. It was like a dust storm. I felt like the bloody cow out of the movie twister there's just like dust storms everywhere just mowing the lawn so we need some rain down here so i can only imagine it's even worse up there but um okay let's bat let's let's move on to some of your lock it in so we've got justin here um uh, justin coin apologies but let's Ooh. stuff up your last name because i'm renowned for doing it so just, <laughs> let's just run with it but justin coin um uh, lock it in tom jenkins three tries and 210 running meters so That'd be nice. Like that nice. Uh, means Jack has to pass the ball, though. Mm. Yeah, Christopher Wilson, another mm. long time listener. Lock it in. KPP five plus offloads, one hundred plus meters. Gagai three plus try. Oh, tackle break. Sorry, tackle breaks, two hundred plus meters. Gamble to sledge every Cowboys player. So I think you can definitely <laughs> lock that one in. That one. Is, he's uh, probably he's probably already done. He's probably been texting them all week, pal. Text the boy. Yeah, just <laughs> ringing them and hanging up. Yeah. Um, Todd uh, Ponya, um, uh, lock it in. Jackson Hastings and KPP anytime try scorers. Knights by two. I'll take it, pal. Yeah, yep. we've got um, uh, Pat Tans, um, uh, Knights 26, Cowboys 18. So I like what you're doing there, Pat. Uh, Milky Bar Kid, two tries, and Ponga for 250 Ooh. meters. Big game. Okay. Big game from Ponga and the Milky Bar Kid. So uh, Mike Allen, Marzu, a double. I can definitely see that on the cards, Mike. Uh, KPP, anytime try scorer, and Newcastle 13 plus. So he's thinking we're going to go up there and have a big Interesting. one. I like that confidence, Mike. That is nice. Unless, unless we we only score eighteen, but we still win by thirteen plus. Which well, we'll take it. Whatever. That, that could work. Way. Yeah. I would love to know of those stats you read. How often of those very few games we've won in Queensland, if we've actually ever won thirteen plus? There you go. If we if, if we do win, it's only we just win, or if there's been the occasion where we've gone out there and blown a team away. But mm. yeah. we'll take it, Mike. We'll take it. Okay, we've got Rads. I love that name, Rads. KPP, anytime uh, try scorer, Knights 18, Cowgirls 12. Uh, that lock it in is Rads, Rads. That's um, Knights getting the win there, so love that. Okay, we'll um, grab a couple more. We've got Adrian Magale, um, uh, lock it in. Greg Marju runs over Cold Felton. KPP scores in the opening half. Kalen Ponga with two plus line breaks, and we win by six or less. So it's going to be a close one there, but he is tipping the Knights for good. a win. Lock it in, Joanne Miller, sad face. So I'm not sure what that's implying. <laughs> but, um, oh, she's, Joanne. She's locking in that she's going to be sad. Oh, she's sad, um, mm. but we don't know why. Hopefully it's a win and she's sad for something else, spills a drink on the carpet or something. That's never fun. So um, we won't be safe for long, Joanne, because in about 24 no. hours after the game, we'll be back doing the Sunday show. We'll pick you right back up, Joanne. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we'll leave the lock it in there, guys, because there's just more random other comments coming through now. So yeah, good thanks stuff. for the um, lock it in, Battlers. We we love that part of the show. It's always fun. Very good, very good. Well, boys, let's move right along to our next segment, shall we? The Punt Club. All right, well, we just witnessed probably the most horrific round of football to ever try and tip. It was absolutely diabolical. It seemed like the best anyone got was three. I'd be absolutely <laughs> amazed if anyone managed to get five or six. It would be absolutely miraculous if that was somehow the case. But um, mm, Well, the right. person leading the punt club at the moment got seven. What? Yeah, one person got seven. Wow. And then... Uh, 
That and almost is just worth two hundred dollars there on its own. No offense then, to that person, but I saw a quote today by um I forgot it was one of the ex players, and they said anyone who got a really good round doesn't know much about football. <laughs> so yeah. take that as you will. <laughs> no offense to the person that came first. I'm sure it was wow. Seven. expert knowledge. But yeah. Mm. They must have left their phone down and their cats walked over and put all their tips in the board <laughs> or something. Just that's, the only, that's the only reasonable explanation I can think We've, of. We've um, got Justin, one of the um, battlers here, asking, is it too late to join the punk club? Can you still no, join? you can still you're... join. I'm pretty, sure if you join, I'm pretty sure if you join after the competition had started, you get, I think you get something like half the tips from like the previous yeah, week or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Not a bad time to start. Not a bad time to start, uh, yeah. Jump, yeah. Jump on in, mate. Jump on in. Yeah. So, uh yeah. All right. Who's going, um, boys? I might as well go first. I went first with the uh, with the lock it in, so I'll go first. Um, all right. So I've um, pretty much taken all the home teams. Really, I've taken the Broncos over the Rabbitohs, the Sharks over the Bulldogs, Panthers over the Eels, Raiders over the West Tigers, Cowboys over the Knights. Storm over the Warriors, Seagulls over the Roosters, and then switched it over and went the Dragons over the Cowboys. Uh, Dolphins, sorry. Very good. Yep. Very good, mate. Hard to push back on that. Well, I'll, I'll go second. What do you got for me, pal? All right. I've gone, unfortunately, the Broncos beating the Rabbitohs. If I get that one wrong, I'm not going to be too sad, let's be honest. Uh, the Sharkies are going to be too good for the Bulldogs. The Panthers, they're going to bounce back in a big way against their uh, Western, Western Sydney rivals, the Eels. The Raiders better beat West. If Raiders do not beat West, that looks very bad on us. If we lose to the team that got beaten by the West Tigers, yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to take that. Um, I've got the Cowboys, unfortunately, besting us this week. I do have the Storm against the Warriors at home. I think they'll be too strong. Um, I do, however, have the Roosters going up to Brookvale and getting a win over there. Um, I believe, unfortunately, Dominic Young will be making his debut for the Roosters this week. And uh, the Dragons coming up to the Gold Coast. Um, I, I think that was a surprise packet of round one. I don't think anyone saw that coming. Um, I think they're going to be too good for the Dolphins, who, let's be honest, they look pretty darn disappointing for their... Mm. Very po polar opposites, those two. One was extremely yeah. poor. The other one was an absolute standout. So uh, uh, yeah. that's that's my tips for this week, boys. Excellent. Okay, let's move on. I think a lot of people will be picking the same this week, so there may not be too much movement in the comp. But, um, yeah, I've gone yeah, the Broncos so. over the Rabbits, Sharks over the Bulldogs, kind of a given. Uh, Panthers over the Eels, pretty much another given if you ask me. Raiders over West. I've gone for the Knights. I'm staying true with the Knights. I think we'll pull it out. Storm over the Warriors. Now, this one, next one was probably the bigger one. I noticed, Sean, you went the same as me and went the Eagles, but you went yeah. the other way. You have went with the um, with the Roosters. So I've gone with the Eagles. I just think the Eagles are going for a really good season, and um, they're going to get this one done. I've gone for the Dragons more on just a feel. I don't know. I've just got a vibe. Dragons are notorious for starting the season really well and then just falling into oblivion. May premiers. After that, yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. I can see that vibe continuing, and the Dolphins, I can see, hitting a bit of a slump, to be honest. So, yeah, that's where I've gone this week. Very good, Very boys. Nice. Very good. Very nice. And have we got the leaderboard, have we? No. No leaderboard? It's on the Sunday oh. show. Oh, yeah. of course, of course. Well, there's someone with seven points that's sitting up top whose cats put their tips in for them. So. Battlers, just quick. Oh, not battlers, sorry. Blokes, just quickly, um, we had a few battlers asking also how do they join the punk club. So there is a link on our website, I believe, that you can go uh, Not the website, on our on our um, Facebook and stuff. Facebook there's page, a link. Sorry, we, yeah, we, can up a, we can put up another another link in case a, people uh, don't want to go searching for it. I have cost been told, anything either. It's no, free. It doesn't. I have been told that when you jump on the NRL tipping website, so if you go if you're on your computer, your laptop, whatever, and um, yeah, you go to your internet and put in NRL tipping, when you log on and select the Knights as your favorite team, whatever you do, we're the first tipping comp that comes up. I don't know how that's happened, but that's apparently what's happened. Um, cream rises, right, seven hundred something people in it. Yeah, there's, the there's cream rise, always rises. Eight hundred at the moment. Yeah, the cream yeah. rises yeah. to the top. There you go. Very good. Yeah, how good's that? Lock it in. Knighted punt club number one tipping comp. Very good. All right, um, let's move right along, shall we? To out of their league.
Oh, All right. Yeah. What do you got in store for us this week, Sean? Mate, I've got a very interesting one for us this week. Um, as you can see there on, on your screen on the left, Andrew John's Cup semi-final. The Andrew John's Cup boys are in the semi-final this weekend. Uh, they're playing on Sunday against the West Tigers at Pertec Park at Singleton. So if you're from Singleton, Maitland, look, if you're even from Newcastle and you've got nothing to do, what's it, about 45 minutes or something? Well, it's probably a bit longer from Newcastle, maybe an hour or so. Um, up to Singleton, get up there, watch the Andrew Johns Cup boys. They are so good. Um, there's about six players that are just absolute standouts that, trust me, they're going to be in first grade. And hopefully, I know it's hard to say that you want to keep all the players from that plus the other grades that we got coming through, but it's a, it's a sensational team. So if you get a chance on Sunday – Head there and watch the Andrew Johns Cup semi-final. Um, over to the girls, we've got the Lisa Fiola Cup round seven nights versus Roosters at Mascot Oval in Sydney at 10.30 a.m. And then the Tasha Gale Cup round seven nights versus Roosters at Mascot Oval um, at Sydney at 12 p.m. Don't do what I did. You know what I did um, once upon a time, boys? I was um, going to go to a Star Wars premiere. I can't remember what Star Wars it was. Um, and it was one of those midnight sessions. Oh, yeah. I knew it was midnight. And um, anyway, the date was like, you know how obviously it's like 12.01, but it, I fucked the date up. I was like, <laughs> oh, that's it, it's tomorrow night. Yeah, sweet. And then I woke up the next morning and there's all these posts all over Facebook about all these people that went to this premiere. Oh, no. I was premiere. And I'm oh, sitting no. there, I'm like, fuck stuffed up so anyway don't don't uh, yeah don't don't stuff up your time <laughs> like i did the force uh, anyway. with you, mate. <laughs> i saw um the attack of the clones one at one of those 12 o'clock ones it's the only movie from memory that i've been to where like everyone's cheering you know when the star wars comes up everyone was cheering and yeah at right. the end everyone was clapping and standing yeah it's a good experience it's so funny you mention that you definitely missed out there sean sorry to that in. It's funny funny my brother told me when he was in the, the states once i think he went and watched the transformers movie Mm. And fucking Americans. He said it was in the movie, the Americans and the Autobots that defeated the Decepticons. And he goes, no shit. The whole cinema's jumping up going, fuck yeah, we did it. Blah, blah, blah. Like it was like a fucking documentary. Oh, man. Oh, my imagine God. Him, imagine Get him during a grip. That imagine him during that speech in Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> Mate. Oh, my God. God. Probably oh. have tears flowing. They were patriotic. And everything. And everything. Just... Yeah, it oh, crazy. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, we don't anyway, that um, Harold Matthews Cup round seven nights versus Roosters also at Mascot Oval, Sydney, one thirty p.m. So yeah, if you're around near Mascot Oval, if you're a Sydney person on um, on Saturday, head over there. SG Ball round seven nights versus Roosters also Mascot Oval in Sydney at three p.m. Uh, then we move over to Jersey Flag, Jersey Flag round two nights versus Dragons. Uh, obviously, we're playing the Cowboys. They don't. They don't have a Jersey flag team, so we're playing the Dragons at Sid Parish Park. Talking about movies, isn't? I thought Sid Parish was wasn't he the Parish boy from um, uh, Jumanji? Wasn't that Parish? You reckon it was Sid Parish uh, from Sydney? Not, not not Sid, but wasn't Parish <laughs> Parish the name from Jumanji? Yes. Alan Parish. Alan, Alan Parish. Parish. Yeah. That's the one. Robert Williams. That's the best. Yeah. One. At 12.15 p.m. And then the knock-on effect, New South Wales Cup, Knights vs. Dragons, Sid Parish Park, Sydney, 2 p.m. This is the only game that's live on NSWRL TV. So if you want to watch New South Wales Cup on TV and you don't really feel like playing, just paying, just um, sign up with a fake email address and get your 14-day free trial. What is it? What is it like seven bucks a month or something? Yeah, it's seven dollars a month or fifty dollars for twelve months, something like that. Give it a go, Battlers. Truly, if you haven't, yeah. just chuck on a bit of junior footy. You'll be some of the footy's pretty darn good. There's some fucking talented kids coming mm. through. So yeah, possibly absolutely. too, if you live with someone in the same house, you could um go halves in it. Three dollars fifty each, maybe. There you, you go. There you go. Mm. Some there financial you know. financial advice from Storky. <laughs> hey, if you want, if you got any more financial advice, uh, let's move right along to our Q and A segment for all your economic and 
yeah, accounting needs. If you've got anything like that, Stork is more than happy to take a few of them. So let's move right along, shall we, to our Q&A segment, eh? Okay, Battlers. So before we kick off all your questions, I've got a burning question I'm going to ask you and the blokes. So I was uh, looking around, listening to a few potties once again. Shout out to Matt Rogers. I'm not sure if it was his potty or whether it was like a radio show, but um, Matt Rogers retired. Uh, he's retired from the game. I remember when Matty Rogers was like the only player in the comp that had heaps of tattoos? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, and he like yeah. stood out because he had the tattoos. But that's yeah. why they was with yeah. the Titans. Eh? He was a bit of a clean yeah. skin at Sharkies, and then came back and yeah, yeah he came back with like that. full sleeves. But no one had them at the end. So yeah, yeah anyway, yeah. Uh, sidetrack. Um, but yeah, he did mention. He said that we're looking at the NFL at a lot of things, like, you know, NRL Vegas and things like that. Looking at halftime entertainment, he was saying that maybe should the NRL put all the money they got left into it and look at getting someone to perform like a big name act, make it a spectacle, yeah. not just for footy fans, people that don't like enjoy football, final. like grand final. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Grand final. Right. So like the NFL, people that don't even like NFL will tune in to the mm. halftime show because it's like its own separate thing. Should the NRL be looking at doing something like that, scraping the dollars together and getting um, someone like that's the first part of the question. Second part is, who would you pick? Now, don't say your favorite Ooh. band. Like, I'm not going to go, yeah, I'll get Fear Factory to play or something because that's not what everyone's going to want. You go, What's a band that you would like or a singer who you would enjoy but you think would garner a lot of attention and a lot of people would um, have their eyes set to it? Jeez. Um, I like it. I think, you know, if, if all this stuff with Vegas pays off, you know, the big – you're going to have all, you know, if all this gambling money and everything – if everything goes to plan that they hope goes to plan – in Vegas, mate, the the extra income the game is going to be making, they can absolutely look to put this stuff on. Because let's be honest, they are very lackluster. Even yeah, when you're at a grand final, the AFL, the AFL is a, the next level. Because they had bloody Kiss last year. Who did we have? I can't remember who we had. Didn't we have like a yeah. tribute, Tina Turner tribute or something? Oh, yeah, that's right. that's right. We had Tina Turner. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, because I remember with the 2019 grand final when it went down there, it was that dude from One Republic. It was just forgettable. You wanted to be, you would hope for that performance to be just as rememberable as the game. Um, and yeah. at the moment, it just, it just isn't. It, it's no. And let's be honest, look, have we got the budget the NFL have? No. You know, it, it'd be crazy to try and compare that. But I think, I think we could definitely do better. Um, when you say who. You know, how big is your checkbook? Because let's be honest. Let, if you said, I know some people are going to roll a checkbook out the window. Yeah. If you said, look, hey, the, Peter Volandis comes out and says, Taylor Swift is playing at the fucking halftime show. Mate, you're going to have eyes from all over the globe, not just Australia, looking at the grand final. Let's be honest. Like that's at this point in time, yeah. there's probably no person on the planet who can bring more eyes than Taylor Swift. I'm not a Taylor Swift fan or anything, but. Have you seen that the the NFL is actually in talks of her to do next year's halftime? Oh, mate, that'd be the and biggest the, of all time. Money, in and the money in question. Wow, it's that crazy. Is, the offer is that usually, usually the halftime entertainment in the NFL they don't get paid. Their oh, pay yeah. is pretty much the uh, spotlight. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Um, but the NFL is in talk with Taylor Swift. To perform at halftime show for a cost of one point nine billion. Wow! Mate, so they, that... uh, they they don't charge they don't pay people normally, but will be paying Taylor Swift one point nine if it happens. Wow. I don't understand um, the whole thing, billion. mate. Like props to her because, mate, she's come so far. I remember when she was um got told off by Kanye at one of the award shows, and that's kind of how she was known, and she was on all these memes. Now she's that's huge, right. like hundred yeah, thousand people. Thing. Like at one mm. of her shows in what Melbourne or Sydney or something, I think it was Melbourne, or whatever. I, I don't get it, but hey, mate, if, if people just seem to be captivated by it, it's absolutely crazy. But... It's it's hard. It's like hard. Like, what do you pick? Like, do you pick? Well, but pick something, something that, that is yeah. is it? That it's more for the younger demographic, or do you pick something that's? Oh, well, man, that's a I've, that's a tough one. I've I've got one. Um, it's 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 out there, but. They're rated as 
they're still rated as the best um, NFL halftime entertainment ever, halftime show. Um, they've recently just reformed. I think they did the 2001 Super Bowl or 2002. It was around about then. They've recently just reformed. Um, their singer's been solo for a little while. Um, but Creed, they're getting back to. Oh, yeah. yeah, I yeah would I've seen them pumping around a bit, yeah. I would potentially throw money at Creed because they are still rated as the best halftime, uh, Super Bowl halftime entertainment ever. Yeah, they're sort of making a bit of a comeback, eh? A bit of they're, a... they're making a comeback. They've yeah, just reformed. Yeah. I enjoy Creed. I don't Honestly. care what anyone says. I, I like Creed. I think they're good. Oh, I, I, I like Creed as well. Yeah. As long as it's not yeah. like Jimmy Barnes or like, fuck. Well, sake. that's the thing. Like, mate, it's it's kind of ingrained in the NRL culture, but you, we've kind of got to think bigger and get like, yeah. yeah well, get you, you, imagine, you imagine that um, Creed hadn't played any stadium shows or anything like that yet since reforming. I don't even think they've, I think they've announced a tour, but it hasn't started yet. Yeah, I think Can you know. imagine if the NRL Grand Final is their first big stadium show? That's somewhat a worldwide thing without going that top level. Yeah. You know what I mean? I guess that's the NRL's like objective nowadays is to get the international eye. So maybe the yeah, maybe it's not so much a local like a Jimmy Barnes or that type of ilk, but yeah, someone I'm, you're going to bring in that's going to people are going to be tuning in from you know. I'm sure. The world. I'm sure a lot of battlers would probably throw out the word Foo Fighters, but to me, you know, they wouldn't get enough. No one's really going to care if they go. Oh, did you hear Foo Fighters are playing in Australia? They would probably just go, and you know what mm. I mean. Like it would have to be. They're pretty big. It'd, it'd, have, it'd have to be something that's going to draw attention. Hmm. Yeah, I like it's that a, one, Storky, bro. Interesting one. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's been a few here, like, um, like there's your obvious one. Depends what direction you're going. Like, I know that every time we talk about anything to do with music, someone brings up NSA Man. So I know something like Metallica or something would get eyes. Something like an ACDC, which kind of leans into the football crowd as well. But they're kind of bigger than bigger than life. But some of the battlers have um uh, got a few here, so. I'll just try and find where they are. Yeah, Christopher Wilson has said, funnily enough, <laughs> Foo Fighters. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of agree. With, I think Foo Fighters, uh, like they sold out Wembley Stadium, which is freaking huge. But they uh, they do come to Australia a fair bit. So it kind of does. They're like relevant. I think that's what makes it. Like, they're, they're currently relevant. I think every time we get someone. They're, they're past their use by day. Yeah. You, you want someone yeah. who's who's currently relevant. And yeah, they, they, they fit the bill. Mm. Yeah, I think um, to the NRL would have to step up their production as well. Like you can't oh, just use yeah. these run out small little stages they use for like Rocker Stedfords at schools and shit. You have to like up. You have to have dancers. You have to have choreography. It has to be a spectacle. So yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what else we got here? We've got um, uh, Adrian said Rage Against the Machine. I don't can't see that happening. Sorry, Adrian. It's uh, yeah, you... they're, they're they're not even Rage Against the Machine anymore. They're kind of yeah. just Rage. Yeah, rage. Rage for the machines. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. Call them. Um, uh, yeah, a few other battlers have said Taylor Swift. Justin's also agreed here. He said Creed would be awesome as well. Um, uh, Newcastle Mixed Martial Arts has said King Parrot. Um, personally, I think um, I think I've got more chance at Fear Factory than King Parrot. They're like a really uh, kind of underground metal band, so I can't see your luck there. Uh, a few other Foo Fighters. Joanne Miller has said. Pearl Jam, they might not as relevant as they were, but they are one of those bands that haven't been to Australia for a while. There is a lot of hype around their upcoming tour, so yeah, they are one of those you know, they do would garner some interest if they did come out. Um, uh, Jason, this is another one. Jason Mathur said Matchbox 20. I didn't even know they were still together, but um, they were pretty mm. big back in the day. I don't know if they're as relevant now, but hey, I'm not a huge fan, so I think 182 Offspring could be as well, good yeah. as well. Yeah, this, true. One. this one would absolutely kill it. Elliot Coomer said Silverchair. Imagine Silverchair reforming, which Daniel John said would never happen for like a million trillion dollars or whatever. But imagine they got back together for the NRL. And if the while. Knights make the premiership, PVL will move heaven and earth again. You're getting back together. So if one man could do it, I reckon Peter Volandis could do it. I think mm. bloody Silverchair getting back together to do that show would be bigger than the NRL. So the NRL would be like... The- like the opening yeah. act to yeah. see what they're getting back together. 
Um, uh, as much as people make fun of him, Jacob Cooper's got a good point here. Nickelback, if Nickelback actually Smashing played. Smashing out the bangers. Hey? They cop a lot, but people do love them. So, you know, it's, um, I think this one's a bit more tongue-in-cheek, but um, Mike here said the Wiggles. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> they, they do shows for adults now. You see that? The adults, like, pack out venues. Oh, yeah. That, so. Bloody oath, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, we'll just grab one more here, but... Um, William Ralph has said uh, the kid, kid the Roy or kid the real. Oh, I'm I not think familiar with him, but I know he is kind of yeah. With it type of, I, but... He's um, I think he does a he does like he's a bit of a South supporter and that. I think that would be really appealing, obviously, to the younger crowd. So maybe mm. something like that would possibly. But they, you're not going to win because you're going to have people. I guarantee you, like all these boomers now tuning in, going, "Who the fuck is Kid the Roy?" You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. I, just did. I knew who he was, but I've literally not heard one. Of him. But in saying that, I'd only you'd, knew one you'd know you'd, Swift song you'd, until recently. So you'd probably know, well, recognize the yeah, song probably, you did with um, Justin Bieber. Yeah. Um, Stay or whatever it was called. I can't mm, remember. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I would have heard. I yeah. I'm not a Biebs fan, but he goes all right. He gets cops a lot of shit, but he's not bad. Um, <laughs> he's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from someone who doesn't really know any of his stuff, but he's all right. Um, Kurt Grubiser said the Screaming Jets. I don't know if they would be big enough to garner, no. garner that attention. So Only if they played no. better for 10 minutes straight. That would be the <laughs> one condition. Yeah, what's and that the night's episode? <laughs> so where they say, ah, play it again. What'd you say? Play it again. <laughs> and they just play their hit over and over again. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, Screaming Jets are a good band name, but yeah, not sure they're at that level. Um, oh, sorry, I said last one about three ago, but Mike said ACDC. I think that would be a huge one as well. They're just a big international band that yeah. people of all demographics, old, young, bogan, hipster, everyone just loves ACDC. So <laughs> it is what it is. But um, let's uh, move on to some of the Battlers' other questions. Oh, the, the burning question, boys. Let's put out some of these burning questions, shall we? So this one's from Adrian um, Magale. He said, are you coming to the game in Townsville, Link? Unfortunately not, mate. I'm actually um, – I pack my bags tomorrow. I'm actually going to go work in an underground gold mine uh, till – believe it or not, I've – this is how committed I am to you guys. I, I, I've sh worked it all out, so I leave tomorrow, and I literally get back in the nick of time for the Sunday show. Um, so I get to watch the game probably on my phone in some shitty little donger um, in some mine camp in the middle of the outback in Queensland, mate. That'll be me. Um, so unfortunately, mate, I will not be going to Townsville. But Batless, he's going to a gold mine and he said, so tune into the next show. You'll see him with some Mr. T chains ah. and a gold drill. <laughs> tune in to see it here. Yeah. Sunday night. Um, He'll be hiding it in his beard on his way out. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Pat Turns has said, what's everyone's ideal bench pending health? So if everyone Ooh. was healthy, what's your ideal bench? Um, okay, so who you got at? You got Okay, we'll start with Lucas, right? Lu Lucas and KPP. Yeah. We talked about this a little bit. I don't think you could lead either of them out. Like, you got Frizz, KPP, and Lucas. One of them has to be benched. So we, who we always keep saying that KPP has a much higher ceiling. So, I think you would start KPP. And bench Lucas. Bench Lucas. So, let's, let's put Lucas... Um, That's bench in, spot in, one. We'll put him in the sixteen jersey. Um, I I would like to see two hookers in the side. I'd like to have a hooker at at fourteen, whether it's Phoenix at nine or Brayley at nine, and the other on at fourteen. So I'll say Brayley. I'm happy with that. So we let's go. Say, let's say Brayley at fourteen. And you got Lucas. Um, you got DSAF. Hetherington at 15 and Hetherington. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to roll with that because Rayleigh, been... Lucas, DSAF, Hetherington. I think so. Yeah. Um, and that way, in a pinch, too, because you know, Lucas can push out to a center if needed. Um, I'm sure he's a big enough guy and, and an absolute pinch. You could put him in the middle. Um, I'll, I'll like that. I think, I think Cro Croker or Hetherington. I think Hetherington, man, he was pretty, he's he's been oh, good. I know he's, he's in form. He is. Yeah, he was Croker, in Croker, form. Can you remember when? Not he doesn't have many bad games, but Croker does he? He's always yeah, one he, of those he's, players he's that solid. comes in and performs. Yeah. 
and scores some good tries. So yeah, so underrated. One of the most underrated in our team, probably. I'll tell you probably, what, if, if Adam Elliott does the hardest one. If Adam yeah. Elliott doesn't really kick on, and then I, th- I think you might find someone like Croak will be really breathing down his neck, eh? And then you know what? I don't think Alan, Adam Elliott's a bench player. I don't think he has the impact off the bench. No, so I if, don't. If, if Croker was to take yeah, that I agree with position, you. Yep. Elliott's gone. He's I, not I'll, a bench player. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. Yeah, that's interesting. That is yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay, next one. Good, um, good question. Good question, mm, Pat. I like yeah. that one, man. Yeah. So this one's um it's actually a Tigers question. So forgive us if we don't know, but Ryan and right here said, Did you see the Tigers lost another major oh, sponsor? You're kidding. So just Ryan. when you think they can't fall any lower, um Oh yeah, because that would have been the um that Lee Hadjimpentalis. He the, the the chairman or CEO, whatever he is, that they booted. Remember that the weird guy was like, Oh yeah, the dude always hats wears the hat. <laughs> he's the CEO of um Brian's lawyers, their major sponsor. Ah, so he's taken so obviously, the ball and gone home. Obviously, because they've turfed him, he's going, well, fuck is, I'm, I'm taking my sponsorship elsewhere. Yeah. Ah. Least, yeah, there should, be, there should be places lining up. So, you know, do, do you know what? Do you know what, Ryan? That's probably a good thing for them. I know it might it might hurt them, but they got that uh, Shane Richardson's in there, in there now. I'm sure, mate, they probably want to cut all ties with that guy. I think he was just yeah, one of the true. worst things that happened to that fucking club. So I'm sure Tiger supporters probably aren't too... And if you have some sponsors with some forward thinking, they're going to be looking at the Luai signing and go, maybe if we get on board and this works, we could get this at a good price and go yeah. from there. So yeah, so there, there you go. Wouldn't be a night of show without without landing the boot in the tiger somewhere, eh, hey, boys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah. this one's more just a statement from um, what we were talking about earlier. Glenn Kemper said the draft will only help teams that cannot develop local players. Teams like Newcastle, Brisbane, Penrith, etc., will suffer unless by offloading players to the draft, these teams get compensated for the effort of developing. Yeah, the, the, the one, yeah, unfortunately, the way in the collegial system of the NFL and the way the NFL is, it works. But yes, under the way things yeah. are now, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't need it. A, it would need a rework somewhere. A, a draft would never work in the NRL, and it's something we'll never see in our lifetime or our kids' lifetime, I feel, because Bradman Best signed with the Newcastle Knights when he was 14. So, you know what I mean? It's it's what are, you, what are you supposed to do? It's not like you can make them not have any pathways. Could you do it, though, where, like, let's say, for instance, the Knights... If, if, if there was some way of going, okay, because you are you guys get to have, I don't know, I'm going to pick a number out of my ass, 10. You can have 10 players that don't get drafted. You get to pick your first 10 mm. and keep them. So you get the cream of the crop. You get the 10 that you've developed. And then same with other clubs, right? They, they all get what they feel like they've developed. So they get to pick them first. And then whatever's remaining goes to draft. Yeah. So you you're sort of developing players on the There'd have to be that. ways to there'd have to be ways to do it. And like I know um, people say, Oh yeah, but you know, the history of the game. The AFL, I believe, didn't always have a draft. And they've do you know, they, they, rugby they rugby league had a draft. Yeah, well, AFL really celebrate have their history more than we do. They're all about their history. Like, just listen to their team songs when they run out, and they mm. implemented a draft. So there they, is ways of doing it, but there will be sacrifices. If it that's wasn't that you went. wasn't long ago, we had a draft. I'm pretty sure the older battlers uh, will know this. I'm pretty sure you remember Terry Hill. Yeah, the old footy player. Yeah, play for Manly. Because, it was because of a court case. He did not want to be. It, we had a draft, and he didn't want to go, and they fucking squashed the whole thing. We had a draft. I so it must have been in the seventies, early eighties, or something. But okay. we absolutely used to have a draft, um, and then he won the court case, and the whole thing just got fucking burnt, really. So there you go. Yeah. Um, uh, this one's just commenting on what we were talking about earlier with the weather. Elliot Coomer said, "Could be a wet one there on Saturday night. Thirty run degrees with twenty percent chance of rain while we're playing. So thirty one mm. degrees and rain means it's probably going to be slippery, and the humidity has a possibility of being shocking. So, mm. geez, ball security ball. Definitely <laughs> yeah. want to work on that shit. <laughs> yeah." So moving on to the next one, um, Jacob Cooper said, you boys think this could be the last game we could see Gamble and Hastings pair in the halves if it goes south? Oh, fuck. If it goes horribly, horribly bad, like really bad, I, I, oh, fuck. I don't know, man. Like, 
It's a possibility. Like we said, we don't want it to wait with these halves until round six before decisions start getting made. If they have an absolute shocker, you could see Cogger in there next week. It's not out of the realms of possibility. Because mm. the other the other thing is too, I've heard arguments where they go for for the overall team morale. If 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 Gamble's the guy that they were in the trenches with and 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 went on this mad streak and won a finals game in, and then all of a sudden, oh, he's played one bad game, he's fucking out of here. What does that do for the locker room? So you got to take that into consideration too. Like, mm. you know that that is that is yeah. there is some merit to that as well. But fuck, it's it's it is the one thing, man. It's it's. It's not keeping me up at night, but I am. I do not want to fall into a trap where it, it's something we go, fuck, we should have done this a month ago. And we're, we're staring down the barrel at, you know, we've lost five games and won two. And we're going, Cog- Cogger's clearly the answer the whole time. Maybe, maybe, maybe one game's harsh, man. Unless it's, an, yeah. unless it's ter- like absolutely terrible. Mm-hmm. If it's anything like last week or a bit under that, I think he still keeps his spot. I think. He, what he game do you think? That. Say they say they don't have a good game together. At what point do you think? Because like I said, we don't want to get to round six. So you're one month. Four, I think yeah. you've got. Because what have we got? The Warriors in Melbourne next. All the way. That's what I was about to say. We could, we could potentially, if we go on a bit of a slide, quite easily be looking at zero from four. Obviously, we lost. On the weekend, uh, this week we're up there in Townsville, which you heard me before say we have a horrible record, 29% win rate. Um, then we got Melbourne at home. And then we got the Warriors away, which our win rate's not much better than it is in Townsville. So, look, if, if we haven't won those four, uh, won any of those four games, I think there's going to be mass changes coming then. And then the next game's against the Dragons. And if the Dragons continue on this surprising form, you never know. We could be none from five. So, yeah. And we're a top oh, – they're, they're, they're talking that. top four. All the talk was, boys, we're no longer just – you know, we know what we've achieved. It's, it, yeah. We've got, we got to stop. I think it's – just historically as night sports, we're, we're okay with – we're okay with falling into this trap where let's give it a bit of time. We're, we're, mm. fuck, we're past it. Look at the team we've got. If we're 0-4, that's diabolical. Something's got to fuck. We're better than that. You just got to look back at those last that last month of football. Well, excuse the last two games. Mate, we could have – we'd look like we could genuinely beat anyone anywhere. We, You ran at the – I remember there was a, a slide you put up. The Knights versus the top – I think it was top four or top eight sides. Yep. And, mate – if we if we were in a competition just with the Knights playing top eight, I think it was top eight sides, we were killing. I think we lose like two games or something at that point. It was crazy. So I think I, I think we got to remember we're, we're a fucking good footy team. And I it's criminal that unacceptable. Man. It's criminal how many like um people have do not have us in their top eight though. I was, I was surprised, and it just continues to happen. So many. So many people like, you know, like people of the game and commentators of the game and people in the know do not have the Knights in their top eight. I guess so historically we're not we're not a team that improves on a good season. It seems like historically we have a really good fucking season and then we drop off. So until that trend we buck that trend. I guess it's it's going to be hard for the war. You know, you know, everyone says that about the Warriors. The Warriors seem to be another team that they they come out and they just you know are awesome. They're putting stacks of points on, look great, and then they just fall off a fucking cliff. Mm. I think a lot of people put us in that basket. And to be honest, like I think a lot of night supporters are wary too. Like we don't seem to be a team that hasn't for a long, long time built. You know, you look you, even under Adam O'Brien's. Tenure. It's sort of, yeah, we, we made finals and you have a horrible fucking drop off and then you get back up with the last season. So hopefully, mm. hopefully we're, we're a team that's moving forward. So, yeah. Okay. Let's move on. This is a good question. This one. Um, we've got um, Paul Reimer here. He said, if you had a question for AOB, what would it be? So, one question you had, had you know, you were at a press conference with him and they said, Lincoln. Or Sean, and you had one question, one shot, just like Eminem we were talking about earlier. What would your question be? 
what is the reasoning behind what you're doing at the moment with Cogga and the Halves and Phoenix? What's your end game? Because I don't see it. Mine would be if I had the chance to ask Adam O'Brien if you'll let if he will let me anywhere near him. Um, <laughs> would be it, it, what's what's the one the one because I. The co- coaches have never stopped learning. What's like the one thing? What was the biggest lesson you learned from last year? What's the don't one put, thing? You don't know, put you, Ponger at six. Yeah. So like that last game, like what is something you wish you knew now that you did then? What would you do differently? Like preparation or something? I know there's probably a billion things, but what's something you learned last year? What was the hardest lesson you learned last year? That makes you a better coach this year. I'd be very keen to know what. Good question. I, I mm. would. Lo- I'd be very eager to know. I'm sure there would be. I'm. Sh- uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So I'm sure he's sitting back on. Fuck. If only I'd. You know, done this or this. Maybe. Maybe things could have been different. But. You know, that's the beautiful thing with hindsight, isn't it, boys? So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd just ask him where he gets his haircut. He's a very sharp looking man. <laughs> Um, no, oh, you would not be that guy that gets that one shot. You would just <laughs> waste on that. Like that Simpsons episode. I remember like you have one question. Really? One question. No, three questions. Yes. Really? Yes. Really? Really? Yes. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I remember there was a South Park episode where someone could ask God a question. They're like, all right, what do we do? What's the meaning of life? Why are we here? And I think Stan walks up. And he's like, oh, um, am I a Am I a boy or a girl or something? <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, fun times. Um, okay, so this is a one from Justin Guan said, should the NRL bring in a bench spot for a winger which doesn't count against the interchange limit? Should a winger centre be injured? Should the NRL bring in a bench spot for a winger which doesn't... Ooh. I, don't know I think it... it... Yeah, He's talking I, like an eighteenth man, like for a like type of situation. Um, sounds like for a winger or for a centre, but that's. I I unfortunately I just don't I, I I don't know the statistics on if anyone would know it'd be Sean, but how often a winger does get injured? Like let's be honest, they're not making a lot of tackles. They you know they run the ball back pretty hard nowadays, and the big finishes. How often they would get injured? Um, yeah, I think that's just part of the game. I just think, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's just one of your four spots that you've just got to work with, you know. Because yeah, I, yeah I guarantee it. If you go, all right, we're gonna open up a fifth spot on the bench. Um, if you would like, you can put a winger or a center there to help out that, you know, fuck around when a when a winger or center gets injured. More than likely, someone's going to chuck an extra forward in there anyway so yeah yeah, yeah. Hey, on the wing you sure about this yeah <laughs> yes yeah. yeah, coaches coaches <laughs> will 100 percent exploit the shit out of that somehow yeah yeah, yeah. you give them an inch mate they'll take them all yeah yeah um okay we've got mike allen here who said do you guys think we will selected to go to vegas next and will you be on the plane over oh yeah definitely absolutely uh, I'd love to know the criteria. I, I really think I think the Warriors need to be a team. I think they're a shoe win. They've got to get the Warriors over there. Um, what do you think? The, the criteria must be you'd have to be a pretty entertaining, competitive team, right? Like, I'm not going to to kick the Tigers down again. Like, you're probably not going to send the West Tigers over there. But um, yeah, I, I genuinely, I genuinely think we're a team that plays that style of footy. Breaking tackles. Kalen Pong is like one of the the faces of the NRL. Let's be honest. Um, Dally M winner. I know it sounds incredibly biased. Probably yeah. You know, other other supporters sitting there going, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Yourself, but um, isn't one of our prerequis- prerequisites for going is that we don't want to lose a home game where other clubs are just like, we don't care, just send us. So that could, yeah, because you know. I think a lot of other teams. Didn't care. They're like, we just yeah, we, so that, we that want is the we cross want against this. us, I guess. If you've like thrown in these type of demands, you know. But mm. yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, mate, we 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 would move heaven and earth, mate. We uh we might give our our good friends at LGB. We we mightn't get a uh, plane over there. They might hook us up with a boat. 
You might go by boat, boys. What do you reckon? By a boat. Hey? Sail the seven seas. We'll get a we'll get a barge over. What do you reckon? Yeah. Hey? yeah. Oh, their barge. Yeah. Oh, you also got like a yacht. I'm thinking like a pirate ship. You know, get link an eye patch. <laughs> we all win. We all pirate. win. Different. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going some luxury yacht. You're going Lincoln's United literally jumping on a barge and stalking I'm thinking of a pirate ship. Bloody black pearl with like a knighted flag at the top. <laughs> How good would that be, boys? Rocking yeah. up. Yeah, nice. That would be fun. Um, speaking of um, going away, we've got Kurt um, uh, Grubasar here has said, are we going to see the full kit wankers at Magic Round this year? You bet your ass are up, pal. Yep. Sure are. They've already been purchased. And everything, all the, yep. Socks, all the shorts, jerseys. And we want you battlers to do it as well. So if you're going to Magic Round, you know, come and – Join us as well. We wanted to um, be like one of the AFL um, teams. I think it was Collingwood. I could be wrong, but on the weekends, um, they were getting dressed up. I don't know the full story, but they were getting dressed up like the Blues Brothers. And there was like a whole yeah. section of like Collingwood fans like dressed up like this. And that's it was, cool. Well, that's what yeah. I what I would like to do is, um, no matter where you're sitting, can you imagine? Say we said maybe maybe not the Caxton. Like if you said we'll meet outside the ground somewhere or near the Caxton. And then say we had 50, 100, 10,000, I don't know, um, full kit wankers all walking in the stadium at the same time. We're sure to get some oh, sort of absolutely. camera yeah. pointing our way at absolutely. this bunch of pongers walking through. So yeah. the, the the goal is, and we should probably start putting it out on socials now, is we want we want to meet up somewhere, have a, have a drink in our full kit wanker gear, and then all walk in together as full kit wanker pongers. Um, <laughs> for the Knights game. The other game is we won't be in it. Yeah, but yeah, for the Knights game. For the, for the Knights, for the Knights yeah. game. That Saturday, isn't it? We're on the Saturday, I believe. Yeah, we're going to be, yeah, gonna be the so. extra, extra extended best. I think we're the three o'clock game yeah. on, we're the first game on the Saturday, aren't we? Oh, I can't remember. I believe. I, I think I know, I know we're not the last one. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Well, you might yeah, be right. I think yeah. we might be the first. If you one. do have an inkling to join us, though, get on it now because that Ponga headgear, mate, it can sell out quick. And mm. sometimes, or if you don't want to go best. as Ponga, go as another yeah, go night. Just, just full kit. Full wanker. kit. Full kit. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be Ponga. Because just, blo- just, just go everywhere, but... blonde your hair. Blonde your hair. Go KP that way. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Um... Okay, let's have a look at Pat Turns here. We've got a couple more and um, then we'll move on. But T- Pat Turns here has said, who do you think is the best coach in the game at the moment? It pretty much comes down to really two at the mm. moment for me, um, which is probably the two people you blokes are thinking of as well. But who would you say is the best? Oh, I, think I really still... like Bellamy. Yeah. yeah. I really yeah. like Bellamy. I do. I think you still got to be a very honest. You've got to be a very, very, very good coach to get three premierships straight. But... You just look at what Nathan Cleary has at his disposal, the best junior system in the competition, bar none, and then the other bloke couldn't be further from that in Melbourne. You know what I mean? Like, he's a guy that somehow plucks these players out. A lot of these players, you know, we'll use you know, your Max Kings, Nick Meany, guys that a lot of... A lot Josh of, King. Josh King. Um, a lot of guys who... Um, yeah, you know, we, we saw the value in Nick Meany, but a lot of other pundits just see him as an average fringy player or whatever. And week in, week out, mate, they perform. Like, look at round one. You think surely a busted ass storm team without Munster, without Nass, going up against the Penrith Panthers, and they not only hold them scoreless, even though it was a horrific game to watch, and get another win. It's just like you never write them off, man. You never write them yeah, off. Melbourne man. just like got a conveyor belt. We've talked about it for years and years. Like one player leaves and you think, oh, there you go. They're not going to be mm. the same. And just another conveyor belt, you know. Player, I could just imagine. You know, player if, jumps if, and they do the job. If you had that junior system, right, 20 years ago with Craig Bellamy there, I think they probably went 20 fucking grand finals straight. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just, it's just a cheat code. You think, how do you beat this? You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> up, up, down, down, right, right. If he, if, if, if he can do that in Melbourne, um, mate, that yeah, truly, like, it, it had not a Craig Bellamy gone to Melbourne, do you think it just would have been one of these perpetually failing teams? And there would have been headlines written like, why are we in Melbourne? Here's this team that's always in the bottom four. No one cares about him, but yeah. he's just made them relevant. It's imperative they did well, years. isn't it? Yeah. If they were irrelevant for this whole time, 
they may have went the way of one of these I other reckon, expansion teams. I reckon they would have. I reckon you would see they would be the first on the chopping block. People would be going, mm. why are we in Melbourne? There's this team that absolutely sucks. No one goes there. They're not developing players. They're nowhere near a premiership. But, mate, over the They've last 20 years... They've never tasted that defeat, really, have they? Like, oh, yeah, they had a couple of premierships taken off them, but that was after the fact. So they haven't really felt that disappointment that nearly every other club knows. Yeah. They've never felt that, so that's crazy. But um, yeah. let's move on quickly. I'll just grab a couple more, and then we'll um, start to wrap it up. Um, uh, Kurt um, Gruber said, he said he'll be doing it, boys. The full kit. Nice. So there'll be at least be four of us. So we've, um, we've recruited Kurt there, so he'll be doing it. Um, uh, just on that again... Justin Guan has said, get Matty Johns to be a part of the full kit wankers army, which would get you on Fox Sport. Maybe if anyone's got his number, shoot it through to us and we'll see what we can do. But imagine he might, might have to, we might have to hit up uh, Matt Gidley. Maybe, maybe he can put us in touch with Matty Johns. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Imagine him down there. Um, okay, and we'll pick this last one here. We've got um, uh, Nate Ryan, Nathan Ryan, who always gives us food related questions. He knows we're a sucker for him. Um, so Nathan Ryan has asked, Do you guys know Suze at Swansea? Awesome pies. Old lady, old lady does the, oh, he set us up here in the world. She's a huge night <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yes! I'm not, I'm not familiar with this. Oh my god! Oh, that is awesome! Yes! Oh my god! So no answer to that, boys. Love a good cream pie. <laughs> oh! I knew this was a stitch up. I was like, he's straight through to the keeper. Off. Bring this up anyway. But, um, no, oh. nice work, mate. There. So after Love last week, work, we were talking mate. about the Golden Girls. So it's um. Yeah, oh my thought it was no. It'll be interesting to end the show on that type of note again. Oh. So. so where about you in uh, Swansea? Are these, <laughs> yeah, these no. <laughs> got the gold membership by the sounds of it. Not too sure. Oh God, Nathan Ryan, my what God. A legend. <laughs> knighted, knighted player of the week. Fuck it, you want it, pal? Nice one, mate. We needed that last. So yeah, that was oh. a nice way to end the show. So um, yeah, boys, let's um bring it home. Oh my God. Oh, you've rattled me, mate. My God. Um, <laughs> all right. Cue the music, Sean. Let's do this, brother. All right. If you haven't so already, please go like, follow, subscribe all over social media. We, we're kicking goals uh, 19,000 on Facebook, 6,000 already on the um, on Instagram. LGB Marine, huge shout out to these guys. If, if you haven't already, please go check them out. LGBmarine.com.au. Support the sponsors. They support us, battlers. That is it for us. Don't just have a good night, have a Newcastle night. Join the Knighted community at thenighted.com.au and on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Knighted Podcast. Until next time, good night.